Today, we're going to look at Framer Workshop. If you missed this new update, it allows you to turn a simple prompt with AI into a working component in Framer. And you can even ask it to give you complete control over the new component, like adding a thickness slider if you want to be able to adjust something on the fly. It allows you to edit these properties once it's already done all the work and coded the component for you. So let's dive right in to Framer Workshop. I've got a new blank project here open in Framer. To access Workshop, we need to go down here to the plugins icon and we can either search it or you can find it right here, Workshop. That'll load up this new window. We can drag this around. For now, I'll leave it in the top right. So we have a few different options here. We can just start prompting or we have some example ones we can select. And importantly, up here in the top right, these three little dots will allow you to change the AI model. So available, we have ChatGPT 4.1, Claude 3.7, and Claude 3.5. And they have a little bit of flavor text here, letting you know which one of these would be the perfect fit for. So for creativity, we're going to go with Claude 3.7. I have a few different ideas I want to try out. But first, let's try a more simple prompt that I think will give us a good result. Make a text component that morphs from one word to another on user hover. Allow me to set the text for both words and I wanna be able to change the speed of the effect as well. So we'll generate that. So now Framer has begun to generate our component for us. So you'll see we have this new component that's been created, morphing text version one. Let's go ahead and drag that into our project. With that component selected, we now have the morphing text component options. So it set up the initial text, the hover text, a duration for us with some other things like setting the type, the hover color, and the text color even. So right now it's got hello as the initial and when we hover, it will go to world with a duration of 500 milliseconds. So let's just see how this is working. So we'll hit the preview and on hover, it changes to world. Now, before we do anything else, let's give it a quick update. So we can just start prompting again, or we can select it and go here to edit in workshop. And that will bring this back up if we closed it. If you're tired of designing from scratch on all of your new projects, meet 8 Point. 8 Point is an ever-growing design system for Figma. 8 Point has a soft four-point grid to make sure everything aligns properly, customizable components to give you control in your designs, and variables to swap themes with ease. This isn't just a one-time release as 8 Point will be updated on a monthly basis. And once you purchase 8 Point, you have free updates for life. If you want to check out 8 Point, you can go over to 8point.io. That's 8pt.io, or there's a link at the top of the description. If you want to know if 8 Point is right for you, you can click the preview in Figma in the top right and look through all the components and the entire file before you purchase just to make sure. With all that said though, let's get back to the video. So here I'm just giving it a little bit more details. I want the morphing to be more like changing into organic shapes so that the hover text looks like it was created from the original text. Right now it's just kind of doing this little fade transition where it like pushes it out of the way it looks like. So we'll see what we get with this. All right, so now that it's completed that, you'll see we have version two here. So let's say we don't like these changes. We can always just select the morphing text version one and it will revert back, which is really nice because as we know with prompting, sometimes you just don't get what you expect. And with the different AI models, sometimes they go a little bit off the rails. So for now, let's take a look at this. That's a little bit better. I believe it also gave us some different parameters over here. We now have morph intensity and the stagger amount. So let's change the morph intensity to one and the stagger all the way to one and see what that does. Much better. I think one of the things that my eyes are doing is since it's changing color, which I don't want, it's making it look like the second word is not created from the first one. So let's change the hover color just to black to match. And I think that will give us, yeah, more of the effect I'm looking for there. And let's even reduce the duration. And of course, since this is text, we can go in here and edit the text. So let's make it a little bit bigger so we can actually see it. Let's make it 100. And now we've got a pretty cool text effect without having to write any code in Framer. 
we have these nice variables it's created over here for us on the properties panel that we can just easily change just like any other setting over here in Framer. And we also have the code stored in the assets under workshop. You can see there is a morphing text dot TSX. If you select that, you can see all of the code. So if you do know code or you want to make some changes, you can do so in here, just like you would with any other code element in Framer. And when we take a component, we just keep prompting until we get more of what we want. We can end up with an effect that looks something like this, which is pretty cool. Finally, let's make one more component, but let's make this one a little bit more complex. So I wanna go with a glass looking credit card that has editable information that can also flip in 3D space and has an adjustable thickness level. So let's see what we get with this. And here is our credit card. That is pretty cool. If we select it, we can go over here and we see we can change the number. We can change the name on the card and it updates over here. And we can even change the CVV, which is on the back. So let's change that to just like 999, just so we can see the change. And then when we flip this, you'll see that. That is really cool. I specified that I wanted to be able to set the thickness, so it gave me a slider here. And we can even adjust the glass effect on a slider, which is a bonus. I didn't ask for that, which is really nice. And if we have any contrast issues, of course, we can update the text or the background color a little bit as well. For a first prompt, that is a pretty good component that I don't think I need to make any real changes to. So that is Workshop here in Framer. Now, of course, this is AI, and so with AI, I do wanna mention that you wanna make sure that your prompting is as accurate as you can describe it. There was a few times in this video that I obviously edited out uh, that I wasn't describing things very well, uh, but once I went back and revised those and kind of made those a little bit clearer, I got a better component. Also, I wanna mention, don't be afraid to delete the component that they give you and start over and with a new fresh prompt because having multiple versions just adds more to the code and makes this more complex. So the further you go in revisions and changes, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get exactly what you want from the changes. So sometimes just starting over from scratch is the way to do this and just try to keep it as simple and as clean as you can. And if you can ask it to give you these nice little parameters over here on the sides to customize as much as possible, that way you don't have to keep saying, hey, change this by two pixels. You can just go over here and drag the slider. Let me know your thoughts on Workshop down in the comments below. And what do you think you're gonna make with this first in Framer? But I think that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a like, subscribe for more videos just like this. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.